Stop. Lokanath Goswami, Lokanath Swami Maharaj recalls, the first thing Srila Prabhupada ever said to him was when Lokanath Maharaj was, he wasn't sannyasi, so, was sitting in front of Srila Prabhupada, cross leg and shaking his leg like this. And the first thing Prabhupada told him was to stop that. So I'm telling you, stop! Parampara. Another thing, please move in a little because now your back is just to Srila Prabhupada. No, others are okay. Sri Vishnu Sahasranam, name 912, Shabda Saha. Shabda means sound or word, as we learned yesterday. And Saha is the sense of tolerating. So it can mean one who tolerates sounds or words. And it can also be uh, taken to mean that he takes, he takes the burden he f of those who call to him in distress. Among the many examples of, or famous examples of devotees who have called to Krishna, Vishnu, in distress is Gajendra and Parashra Bhatta describes this name right up to name 945, that's quite a few names, in terms of Bhagavan's liberating Gajendra. He liberated Gajendra from the attack of the crocodile he liberated Gajendra from the body of an elephant and from the dull consciousness of an elephant. And he liberated Gajendra from material existence. <clears throat> Gajendra was a great devotee in his previous life, but he was cursed to enter the dull body, dull means dull consciousness, body of an elephant. When standing in the water, his foot was caught by a crocodile. Crocodile we find in Sanskrit, one name is Graha which means one who catches hold. So after attempting to free himself from that situation and failing, Gajendra called, the, the consciousness of his previous life awakened and he called in distress to Bhagavan. And grabbing a lotus flower from that lake in which he was standing, he, he, with his trunk, he offered up to Bhagavan one lotus flower. So Parashra Bhatta, he relates this name Shabda Shaha to Bhagavan being so kind that even the incoherent call of an animal for distress, he will hear that. And as soon as he heard that, he took it as his pressing responsibility that I must deliver him. Gajendra has no other, he's, he's, he, no other shelter, only he calling for help to Bhagavan. And hearing that, Vishnu thought, I must help him. Or oh, I just, 
saying this, I just thought of something else to say in this lecture, which I didn't make notes for. So that's the first verse of the, uh, what's that, the Dhamma, Dhammada, what's that Dhammada Strotrum? The, uh, mm, the uh, Dhammada, what's the name now? What the gopi said when, when uh, Krishna left. Makunda Dhammada Madhaveti. He Krishna he Yadava he Sakya. No, no, yes. What is that? It's famous Stotram. I just can't remember it. Ah, yeah, better late than never. Govinda Dhammada Stotram. Does any, can anyone find that? The first verse is relevant to this. Govinda Dhammada Madhaveti. So, ah, uh, It, 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 Vishnu, just on hearing that, he was out of Vaikuntha. He didn't wait. Garuda was saying, just, just, you know, just wait a minute, I, I, you, have to go on, you have to go with me. I have to carry you. And you, know, you have to dress up a little bit and, and mm. look, look, look proper. You're not even wearing your shoes. He was out. Uh, yeah. You got the translation there, also. And oh, no, that's. The... Oh, this is not the first no. verse. No. That's strange. This is like the end verse. These verses come at the end of it. No, that's. That's only a few verses. You have to find the whole thing. It's only a, that's only a selection. Mm. So uh, Krishna says, "Patrang pushpang palam toyam yome bhaktya prachiti, tadham bhakti, ah, tadham bhakti paritama shnami prayatatmanaha." If one offers me with love and devotion, a leaf, a flower, fruit or water, I will accept it. Where does he say that? Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. Where else? Where else do we find that? Ah, nine, chapter 9, text 26. Anywhere else he says that? Anyone? Hmm? Well, he said it at Kurukshetra. We also find in the Bhagavatam when I heard Kurukshetra, Kuchala. Kuchala is the Tamil name for the Sudama Brahmana who came with a very poor offering to Krishna, you'll find this in the Bhagavatam. And Krishna at that time also spoke the very same verse. So Vishnu in Vaikundra is saying, he's offering me a flower. He's calling it to me in distress. I have to. He didn't even think about it. He has to go. In Russian, ah, this is it. This is it. Yeah, okay, try and find it in English also. Ah. We have a verse in Rupa Goswami's com compilation, Padyavali, describing this. Atandrata chamopati prahitta hasta mashvikrita. Pramita mani padukam kim iti vismitana antapuram avahana parishkriyam pataka rajam arohata karipravara bringhite bhagavatas tvarayai namaha. Uh, 
Ah, yeah, it doesn't have the diacritical marks, but I, I can fill that in. And translation? Yes, in, in Russian. No, I, I, anyway, I can work it out. So, Gajendra. Mm. Uh, okay. Is uh, as Krishna is rushing out of rushing out of Vaikuntha, the one of his military commanders comes and says, "Here, at least put your shoes on, your jeweled sandals. It's fit your God, after all." Krishna just rushing out quickly looks at him and says, "Why? <laughs> Why should I waste five seconds?" Mm. <clears throat> And the Garuda, seeing it, forgetting he's inside the palace, starts flying, seeing that the Lord is in such a rush. Just as uh, Gajendra is trumpeting, the sound of an elephant is called a trumpet, so Garuda also makes a sound like that. So the compiler of this verse, Sri Dakshinatya, he says, I offer my obeisances to the Lord's swift departure. Rupa Goswami has compiled a verse in this regard. Sangsar ambasi samrita brahma bhare gam hira ta patraya grahena bhing grihitam ugra gatina kroshantam antabhayad Deepen adya sudarshanena vibuddha klanti chida karena chinta santati rudham udhara hare machita danti swaram. He says, Rupa Goswami says, the elephant, it's, uh, it's built on, it, it, this verse is built on, it's an analogy built on the pastime of Bhagavan delivering Gajendra. The elephant of my mind is drowning in the water of material illusion. Strongly held by the ferocious crocodile of the threefold miseries, it anxiously cries with fear in its heart. Hari, O oh Lord Hari, please rescue my mind with your glowing Sudarshan chakra, which cuts the sufferings of the demigods to pieces. The concluding words of Pramaya Ratnavali by Balade Vidyabhushan Nityang Nivasatu Hridaye Chaitanyat Ma Murarian Naha Niravidyo Nevrittiman Gajapatir Anukampaya Yasya. This verse can be understood in relation to Krishna or to Lord Chaitanya. In relation to Krishna, it can be translated as follows. May Lord Krishna, whose form is spiritual and full of knowledge and who mercifully purified and delivered Gajendra, the king of the elephants, et eternally reside within our hearts. So you can see that the Vaishnava Acharyas have given much importance to this pastime of delivering Gajendra because it gives us great hope that if he will even deliver an elephant well maybe there's some hope for me too he's so merciful in Gita he says Mangi Parthivya Parshutya Ye Peace Yuv Papa Yonaha Sriyo Vaishas Tata Shudras Tepiyanti Param Gatim Krishna says that even persons who are considered of sinful birth, women, vaishas, and shudras, can attain me if they take full shelter in me. But that's an understatement. Because he's willing to deliver even living beings in subhuman forms. Somehow or other, if they take shelter of him. Hmm. Then this verse, Baladev Vidyabhushan's verse, interpreted for Lord Chaitanya. 
May Lord Chaitanya, who is actually Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and who mercifully purified and delivered Maharaj Pratāparudra eternally reside within our hearts. Now, another very famous example of Krishna responding to the cry of distress of his devotee is in the case of Draupadi. She was in the, she was in the presence of her protectors, her five husbands, as she was being disrobed by Dusharshana. And none of them would come to help her. She called out to all the members of the assembly, surely Bhishma would speak and stop this disrobing. She asked, is this dharma? Bhishma waffled. Waffle means he spoke some words which sounded meaning, it, it just blah, 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 blah. Not, not, nothing clear. He said, well, dharma is very subtle and very difficult to understand. And she had no other recourse but to call out, Govinda! Govinda! And, and Govinda manifested himself in the form of unlimited cloth. So that however much Dushashana pulled, he could not disrobe her. Krishna felt great regret about this. He said, I, I, I should have come personally immediately. He had just returned after being with the Pandavas. He had just returned to Dwaraka and found the city besieged by Shalva. So he was busy fighting Shalva. But, so he, he didn't come personally, but he manifested in the form of cloth. But even when he was leaving this world, up to that time he expressed his regret that I could not properly protect Draupadi. By that call of distress, she purchased his heart. The first verse of Bilvamangal Thakur's famous Govinda Damoda Stotram uh, reminds us of this. Agre kuru namata pandavanam dushashane nahrita vastra kesha krishna tada krosha dananyanata govinda damodara madhaveti In the presence of the kurus and the pandavas, dushashana was attempting to pull her cloth and her hair. At that time, Krishna called out. Wait a minute, who was calling out? Was it Draupadi or Krishna? Krishna means Draupadi. It's another name for Draupadi. The female form. Male form is Krishna. Female form, Krishna. Because, because her bodily features are blackish. So at that time, Krishna Tada then Akrosha, she called out in distress. Having no other recourse, no other shelter, no other Lord, she called out, well it's famous that she called out Govinda, Govinda, here it stated she called out Govinda, Damada, Madhava. The saying that's what the gopis called out when, when uh, Akrura, that name is just coming up now, Akrura, it's also a name of Vishnu. So, yeah, so that's what they called when 
Akrura took Krishna from Vrindavan. Uh, Shabda Saha can also mean that he, Bhagavan, tolerates abusive words from his enemies. <clears throat> or from others also. <laughs> uh, the famous example, it's, we don't have it given by the commentators, but the famous example is that of Shishupa. Uh, often the parents, they become very pleased when their children first begin to speak. They may say something like, Mama, blah, 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 nah, nah. And the parents become charmed. Shishupal's first words were abusing Krishna. So his, his mother requested Krishna, you please tolerate him. Krishna said, yes, all right, I'll tolerate. Ninety-nine times. If he insults me publicly, a hundred times, because privately he was doing... Like, it's just like, like uh, someone who's addicted to chanting the Maha Mantra. He was addicted to abusing Krishna. So even when he's eating... <laughs> he hates Krishna. From his very childhood, he hated Krishna. He had chosen to do so. As the doorkeeper of Vaikuntha, he chose to hate Krishna. Mm. So Krishna was counting. One, okay. Now two, he's insulted me public twice. Three. And then when Krishna kidnapped Rukmini to marry her, Shishupal, whose hatred was already unlimited, increased exponentially. So Krishna was counting, 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 97, 98, 99. The Raja Suya Yagya. Then Shishupal stood in front of everyone, all the aristocracy of the whole universe. And Shishupal, he was quite intelligent because he thought he could, well, he was not quite intelligent, but not quite intelligent enough. Because he thought, I can get away with it here. Either no one will protest against my insulting Krishna, or, seeing we're all Kshatriyas here, There'll be a big fight. And if there's a big fight and all blood is spilled before the animal's head is cut, then the whole preparation for the yagya is spoiled. You can't have a yagya which is contaminated by human blood. So Shishupal started insulting Krishna. And Bhima was standing there. Bhima was just, uh, just, about to, he, just about to completely crush him. Later he crushed that demon. What, what was his name? That uh, Kuch, Kuchika? Kichaka. Kichaka. Uh, he was a very powerful warrior. And Bhima ro crushed him up pushed all his limbs so he just became like a ball, ball of flesh. But Krishna restrained him. And Krishna with his Sudarshan chakra, he removed the head of Shishupal without dropping any blood. So he tolerates, but not forever. 
In the case of Pondraka, it wasn't really a case of tolerating, it was just comical, that's all. <laughs> and Krishna went to the city of Varanasi, where Pondraka was hanging out, and uh, it, was, it was like uh, fun for, for Krishna, this, this fool. <laughs> Pondraka, you have an imitation Sudarshan Chakra. I'll give you the real one. Oh, sorry, it didn't quite land on your hand. It slipped and chopped your head off. Sorry about that. <laughs> he also, Bhagavan, an example of tolerating insulting words, yeah, also with Brigu Muni who's not a, not a demon, but just to test Bhagavan, he spoke insulting words to him. Here's an example, a verse from the third canto of Bhagavatam. Varaha Dev tolerating the insults of Hiranyaksha. Paranu shaktam tapaniyo pakalpam mahagadam kanchana chitra dangsham marmanya bhikshnam pratu dantam duruktai prachandamanyu prahasang stang babhashe. Ah. The demon, who had a wealth of ornaments, bangles and beautiful golden armor on his body, chased the Lord from behind with a great mace. The Lord tolerated his piercing ill words, but in order to reply to him, he expressed his terrible anger. So it is a great quality to tolerate harsh words. As a child in merry old England, uh, we had one saying, because children are prone to say nasty things to each other. I don't know if that's so in your country. I doubt if all the children here are like Prahlad Maharaj. Anyway, we had a saying, Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But actually words can hurt. The, the harsh words of someone who is very dear to you, that stayed in Mahabharata, they, they hurt more than arrows. So we should be careful. Someone who you love can hurt you much more than your someone who you know is an enemy. Mm. Krishna tolerates the words of his enemies. Those who are his devotees, they don't speak harshly to Krishna. In Rajalila, yes, the gopis, especially Radharani, may do so. Then Krishna becomes very disturbed. Mm. He has to find ways and means to pacify her. Shankaracharya interprets this name, Shabda Saha, as he whom alone all the Vedas proclaim with single focus. He who is the object of the, all the Vedas. Sarve Veda Tatpadam Amananti. Yeah, that's from the Vedas, from the Kato Upanishad. Then, uh, Vedasya sarvemaha, sarveraha meva vedyaha, same thing in Bhagavad Gita. 
Uh, it can be understood that he is the meaning of all sounds in all languages. Directly or indirectly, everything indicates Krishna. Inasmuch as nothing is, it's not possible for anything to be completely separated from Krishna. Another meaning that even though he is shabdatiga, he is, be, he is beyond all sounds, he allows himself to be invoked by the Vedic sounds. Baladev Vidyabhusha says that he, Krishna, removed the distress of the Pandavas when Durvasa came to uh, harass them at Duryodhana's bidding. And Baladev says that Shabda Saha means he who hears Sahate, Draupadi's word summoning him. And Baladev Vidyabhushan quotes from the 108 names of Lord Krishna in Brahmanda Purana. Krishna Vyasana Karshaka, he who takes away the distress of Draupadi. Another meaning, Shabda Vedadi Mantra, Tang Sarati Gachati Iti, Shabda Saha Somaha, Shabda Sang Mantra Grihi Tang Somang Patung Gachati Iti Shabda Saha. In two ways it's stated that after chanting the Vedic mantras, he drinks Soma juice and therefore he's called the Shabda. Saha. So please tolerate my words following the example of our dear Lord. Hare Krishna.